blizzard conditions in California. And this is no joke. They're expecting up to 10 feet of snow in some areas. First, let's take a look at weather today around the world. The hot spot in the world, once again, Australia. But that's going to change in the coming months as the northern hemisphere heats up. So we're looking at Tarkula for the hottest location. And there's hardly anything there because it is a ghost town. The world's cold spot outside of Antarctica. That's going to be in Siberia once again, but it is warming up. Minus 49 instead of minus 65 to minus 70. Ust Charki only has a population of two. And there's not even any photos there. I suspect the population there just supports the weather station that has been there for, I think, about 50 or 60 years. This evening's weather chart does show a strong weather system in the Great Basin area and Northern California. Atmospheric river spreading inland. Let me show you that. This chart comes from the University of California at San Diego, showing the atmospheric river IVT values, integrated vapor transport, bringing in values of about 300 to 400 into the San Francisco and Sacramento area. And those values increase overnight as we get increasing upper dynamics, increasing upper level wind speed, deeper moisture, orographic enhancement, looking for about two to four inches of snow per hour in the Sierras. Here's a look at snow totals from the National Blend of Models, looking for about three to seven inches in the mountains around Los Angeles where they have winter storm warnings, but they go up significantly in the Sierras, up to seven or eight feet of snow. All of these yellow colors, those are five feet of snow. So Interstate 80, heavily impacted. And further up north, plenty of snow to go around, up to 15 inches around the passes around Interstate 5, and quite a bit more as you go north through the Cascades and the Coastal Range. There's a look at Interstate 80 near Colfax, which is east of Sacramento, Coming down is rain, but you can see the camera being bounced around by that wind. As we head further up Interstate 80 into the foothills, that's how it looks around Gold Run. Up at about 3,000 feet, it is rain. A little bit further up the road in Blue Canyon, yeah, now we're picking up the snow. And that's right there, and you can just imagine further up the road. Yeah, it looks like the traffic is moving, but quite treacherous. And there's how California looks at this hour, the San Joaquin Valley in the 50s, with quite a bit of rain. But, of course, up in the higher elevations, got that snow coming down, and things are going downhill tonight. And you can just see there's just way too many warnings and watches to go over. Many of these are going to be high wind warnings in Nevada and the California deserts. But this orange, that is a blizzard warning for the Sierra Nevadas. Extreme winter impacts there. And by extreme, that's coming straight from the Weather Service offices there. Elevations above 2,500 feet will be affected. One to three feet of snow above 3,000. And the higher elevations could be five to 10 feet of snow. Winds 75 to 120 miles an hour along the ridges. So this is a major winter weather situation. And the flow, the mid-tropospheric flow, pretty much blowing perpendicular to the mountain range. So they're getting the full impact of that orographic lift. So let's back it way, way out and look at the upper air pattern. This is the 500 millibar chart up at about roughly 18,000 feet showing a strong long wave trough along the west coast and northwesterly flow offshore becoming westerly along the California coast. The Sierra Nevada is located right there and that atmospheric river just feeding right into the mountains. Anyway, we had a split flow pattern over the past week or two. Southern branch down here, northern branch, but this northern branch is becoming dominant. And that is going to be the main polar front jet coming into the California area and then flowing into southern Canada. 
The Hudson Bay Vortex is positioned over Ungava Bay and putting much of Quebec under strong northwesterly flow. So quite a bit of cold air advection spilling out into Newfoundland and the Labrador Sea. And then going up to jet stream level, about 30,000 feet, 300 millibars, showing 150 knot flow coming out of Alaska into the Gulf of Alaska. And there's that 130 knot jet coming into Sacramento, Reno, and the Great Basin area. And that continues on, as mentioned earlier. And we do have a subtropical jet down to the south, not really interacting very much with that polar front jet. And there's another perspective of that California weather system. Quite a bit of lift and moisture back in behind. The cold front itself located about Fresno, Vandenberg, and most of the strong dynamics located up to the north around Sacramento and San Francisco. Elsewhere around the country, we've got this coastal low near Charleston, South Carolina. Large area of warm advection and lift north of that low across the Carolinas into Virginia, and we do have winter weather advisories in parts of the mountains of West Virginia. A fresh outbreak of cold air coming down through North Dakota, but this is not going to have much of an impact further south. Mostly those effects will be confined to the northern plains. And of course, we mentioned our weather system there in California and Nevada. Let's take a look up in Canada and Alaska. We can see here that the weather is dominated by this large ridge, although the central pressure is in that polar air mass only about 1035 millibars. So that is fairly typical for March. We do have this weather system moving through Manitoba, snowfall warnings for up to four inches of snow in parts of northern Manitoba. But they are watching very carefully southern Saskatchewan and Manitoba for this weekend where there could be snowfall as much as eight to 16 inches. And out in the Atlantic, vast amounts of cold air advection. So you may wonder, this time of year, where all that cold air is. Well, it's emptied out into the Labrador Sea and making its way towards Europe. A very stormy weather pattern in the UK. A 988 millibar occlusion sitting across England with a cold front across France. So there's a quick look at the infrared imagery across the U.S. showing that Weather system there in the coastal region of the southeast. Some showers and storms in western Georgia. Clear skies across much of the central U.S., but they are looking at some fire weather danger coming up for the weekend. And, of course, on the west coast, our winter storm. Let's take a closer look at that. There's the Goes West satellite showing a large area of open cell cumulus that's indicative of cold air advection spilling south into the eastern Pacific and modifying. And you can see a transition right in here between open cell and closed cell convective elements. And that typically defines where the polar front jet is. And we can kind of follow that around like that. And that shows us where the axis of stronger winds is located. There's the water vapor imagery showing the atmospheric river heading into California. Although this is mostly sensitive to the mid and upper troposphere, not really picking up as much moisture in here. It's very difficult to see, but it is definitely there. And that snow definitely coming down even further north into the Lassen Peak area. You can see another disturbance coming onshore right there around Brookings, Crescent City, Eureka. And that looks to have some well-developed convective elements, some steep lapse rates within that air mass. And there's the visible satellite imagery for Oregon and Northern California, showing those heavier convective elements crossing the coastal range and moving out towards Eugene and Medford. And we drop down into California itself and get into the bulk of that atmospheric river. Those orographic showers all up and down the Sierras probably about as far south as Yosemite, and out to the west. Very strong cold air advection pouring into the coastal regions, and even out to sea showing some very vertical cumulus fields. Okay, let's go ahead and look at that forecast going into tonight. 
very slowly our weather system works into Nevada and Central California. By later tomorrow, the atmospheric river positioned over Los Angeles, Bakersfield, Las Vegas, and you can see those winds picking up to 35 to 40 miles an hour. Now, there is some question how much moisture is going to make it east of the Sierra Nevadas. There, there is a pronounced rain shadow effect. And, of course, I used to work in Nevada on the Nellis Range and these very deep southwesterly flow situations with very dynamic weather systems. Those produced some of our most significant weather that we would see. Anyway, this weather system will continue to head east and it will be drying out as we go into tomorrow night, and you can see things subsiding along the length of that Bear Clinic zone. Gradually, the weather system heads out into the Rockies for Sunday and starts affecting the Great Plains. Now, with that weather system approaching, we have had the winds picking up there in the Great Plains. You can see sustained 30-knot winds, and with this region being very dry, there is the potential for extreme fire danger, and they already do have red flag advisories out for Saturday and Sunday. And there are extensive red flag warnings posted for much of the High Plains, and these will likely be expanded eastward during the weekend. Up to the north, you can see some of that wintry weather there in Winnipeg, gradually shifting eastward. And at the other extreme, strong warm air advection bringing 80s all the way to Kansas City and 70s into the Corn Belt. And in Texas, there's the appearance of the dry line. And let's see how things work out going into Monday. Well, it looks like this is going to be a dry system. As we go into late Monday, not much development near that triple point, but there is some warm air advection precipitation out there in the lower Mississippi River Valley. And significant amounts of moisture with precipitable water running as high as 1.5 inch in northern Louisiana. Up to the north, cold air spreading into North Dakota, temperatures in the 20s around Bismarck, and 18 degrees around Minot. Going into Tuesday, new atmospheric river moving into northern California, shifting down the coast, but not quite as strong. Meanwhile, 80s continue in Texas, and cold weather continues in the Dakotas. And let's take it forward through the rest of the sequence. Things get a little bit iffy as far as model consistency. There's a lot of differences between the GFS and European models, so I'm not going to worry about this too much. But overall, it looks like an active weather pattern for the next one to two weeks. And another atmospheric river heading into Northern California is possible around the 10th. But again, a lot of uncertainty in these model solutions. And that's all for this edition of Forecast Lab. We'll be back again on Monday, but if you want to see it, you need to be a Patreon supporter. So head to that link, and we'll get you all set up, and otherwise we'll see you back here once again on Wednesday. Hope you have a great weekend. Take care, and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.